So here we are, it is currently a cold January winter's day and the immediate reaction for a human being when they get into a car is to turn on the heated seats. However, that does come at a cost and with the current climate and costs of living increasing by the day, should you really spend them extra pennies to turn on that magical heated seat button? As always with this channel, I am always doing my utmost to cover the most mundane topics so you don't have to because I thoroughly enjoy doing anything fuel economy related and this video is no exception. So it's a silver lining really because you guys don't really need to cover this boring topic because I'm going to do it for you. It's a win-win for both of us. Anyway, I am going to go to the petrol station to fill up so I can begin the journey and I'll explain further how it's going to work. But before I get to the petrol station, I just need to warm up the car because I don't know if it's necessary, but I'd rather the car be at its op optimal temperature before I start the test so it's completely fair throughout the whole video. Okay, I've just filled up. Now we need to reset the trip computer and also reset this one as well. Now we're ready to go. Okay guys, we're now on the move and how is this going to work, I hear you ask? Well, I am going to drive a set distance and I will do the set distance twice. One, without the heat, heated seats on, I have got the heated seats off for now and then I will then fill up once the journey is complete and then we'll gather the results and then I will start the test again doing the exact same uh, route with the exact same driving style. I'm not going to vary my driving, it's going to be exactly the same. And then with the heated seat on that journey, I will then fill up again and then we'll compare both the results and use like a percentage calculator and we'll see exactly how much the heated seat is literally burning your wallet. But the journey in general will consist of just dual carriageway driving. Um, there's not really much variation that could really go wrong in terms of both journeys. Maybe a bit more wind, uh, I might get stuck behind a slower vehicle for a, a temp like temporarily. But other than that, it shouldn't really hamper the results too much. But generally speaking, I have absolutely no idea what percentage we're going to be getting. Um, I did an air contest uh, a few months back, um, but no one's ever covered how much fuel heated seats use. I've looked all over the YouTube search engine and I can't find anything. So I think I'm the man for the job for this. Uh, I, I do love my fuel economy as nerdy as it is. I, I, I love geeking out over statistics and numbers. So yeah, really looking forward to this one. And for any of you who don't know what car I'm in, I'm in my C63 W204, which has the lovely 6.2 litre V8. So it will be interesting to see what sort of MPG we'll get. I mean, I know what I'm expecting, but if you don't know this car very well, you should get a good indication what sort of MPG this car averages over a 70 miles per hour uh, long round trip. Anyway, I have now really run out of words to say to you guys, so I suppose next time you see me or next time I speak to you will be when I've filled up and we'll have the results without the heater seat on. So I guess I'll see you then. Okay, the first journey without heated seats on is now complete. I'm just now going to fill up the car. We'll see how much fuel we've used and then I'm going to fill up again. Well, obviously I've fill up to see our results. But I'm going to fill up and then we will start our next journey to see what it's like with our heated seats on. Looking forward to that. It's just really dark at the moment. I hope you can still see me. Okay, I'll just over there a quick video of what we achieved when I just rocked up the petrol station, but this is what we've got right now. I'm now gonna reset it again, and then we'll continue our quest. So here we are everyone, embarking our second journey with the heated seat on. I've got it on the third setting, so the hottest. 
and this car seems to have a feature I'm not sure it was every car but when after a period of time the heated seat starts to decrease its temperature setting so it's currently on three bars and after a while it goes down to two bars and then one bar and I think it just stays in the one bar unless you turn it off and then turn it back on again but I want it on the hottest setting because obviously if you are cold you want the heater seat on you obviously want it in the hottest setting so when it does go down to two bars I'm going to turn it off and then turn it back on to three bars again immediately so not only have I got to keep my eyes on the road but I've also got to keep my eye on that trusty heated seat but yes the first journey went swimmingly well and I didn't really come across much problems at all 70 all the way very mundane boring journey now I've got to do it all over again with the heated seat on and it might sound like I'm actually complaining about having the heated seat on but I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys I really don't like heated seats and I never use the feature um, unless I'm really really cold I will always avoid using it I don't know why I'm just I find it very uncomfortable and I don't like the feature really at all which is quite weird I don't want to sound pretentious but the vast majority of cars I've actually owned have had heated seats and I never just use it so yeah not only have I got to do this journey which I don't actually mind if I'm honest I don't mind doing these tests because I get excited over them but I've actually got to go through pain not very bad pain but I've got to put myself through something I don't really want to do which is having this heated seat on yeah there's much worse things um, I could do to inflict pain on myself okay maybe I was being a bit over dramatic about the heated seats they are somewhat comfortable for about 20 seconds but after that it's just it's too much and it starts to be uncomfortable I can kind of see where they are useful though like if you have a convertible and it's winter some people do like to have their top down um, and I do actually see the sense and have the heated seat on them because I do I do like the cold so I can kind of see where heated, heated seats would be quite um, understandable for a convertible but anyway I'm probably boring you guys so um, next time I'll probably speak to you again is when we're at the petrol station so I'll see you then Okay, the journey is now complete. We are now at the petrol station with the heated seats on challenge. So now we've just got to fill up and then we'll get our results from there. Okay, everyone, I have now completed both uh, journeys and I have compared both of the results from when I rocked up at the petrol stations, according to the computer, it tells me the journey time, the mileage, the MPG, and the distance we covered. And the distance was exactly the same. The journey time was literally both the same, I think 47 minutes. And the MPG was like very, very close. And we also managed to maintain the same speed throughout both tests. 57 miles per hour, I, I think, is the figure we had. So. I genuinely can't believe I managed to get 57 miles per hour dead on for both journeys because obviously there are limiting factors to how close you can make both tests because it's, it's so many variables such as like traffic lights, there was roundabouts, incompetent drivers who just don't know how to use the roads. So to manage to get the same speed and everything the same pretty much dead on is quite extraordinary. So. If any of you guys were wondering, okay, so what happens if there was more stops on one journey than the other? I can assure you it was literally the same um, on both journeys. So that makes the continuity, well, just more fair. So that is fantastic. Uh, anyway, so I've now got to jot up all the results. I've got a recorded how many litres of fuel we use. And obviously we've got the, the displays on our computer to tell us what we've got there so now all we need to do is use the calculator mpg calculator on my phone then i will compare the results with the uh, heated seats off and on then when we've got both of those i will then use an mpg like percentage calculator and then we'll compare how much they differentiate so let's get on with it 
Okay, so I now have the MPG calculator out. So I now need to put in the distance, which was 45 miles for both trips. And liters of fuel used, this is for the heated seats off. And that was 8.4 liters of fuel. So let's calculate now. 24.35 miles per gallon. Mmm, tasty figure, not too bad, especially for a 6.2 V8. And now with the heated seats on, we did 45 miles again, obviously, and the litres of fuel used was 8.51. So there is a difference. There is a very minute difference. It's, it looks very small, but we now need to find out how different they are in terms of percentage. This is, I am absolutely buzzing right now. I can't wait to find out. Okay, so now that we have both MPG figures for heated seats off and on, I am now in a percentage calculator. So if I put in the figures, uh, which are, so we're gonna put heated seats on first, 25.40, compare that to heated seats off, which is 24.35. So if we press calculate, we're gonna get our result and I'm, oh, I can't wait, here we go, calculate. Wait, what is that? I need to copy and paste that so we can get, actually get a proper result. If that's what I think it is, paste. Whoa, that's a big number. Good gracious me. Uh, so in a short, it's about 1.289 miles per gallon. So nearly 1.3 miles per gallon. Wow. That's not actually that much, is it? I mean, if that's over a long period of time, that is obviously going to be some bit of money. That's going to take many years to accrue a lot of fuel used on the heated seat so yeah oh my I'm, I'm absolutely chuffed it does actually use fuel but not much but there is still a difference uh, i just i'm really happy to actually find out the definitive answer about heated seats so in short really if you do want to use heated seats the added percentage of fuel it uses is about 1.29 percent which is quite a minute difference but obviously Things do add up over time, but it's a very small price to pay for a luxury for most people. And it's also kind of an excuse for me to nerd out over statistics because I love doing fuel related tests. I just love finding out what happens if you take something in or out of the equation. I get a huge buzz out of it. So, yeah, um, if you have enjoyed this style of video, if there's any more tests you want me to do, then please do let me know because I'll happily obliged to do more fuel related um, or more tests because I genuinely do enjoy finding out things. I do, knowledge is power at the end of the day. So if you have enjoyed this, then please do give it a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this sort of content. I don't just do boring stuff. I do actually do more fun stuff. So if you do like car related stuff, then please do check out my channel. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and Bye for now.